Well, we'll jump right in and get things going. I'm really glad that you guys could make us this evening. And uh, we're going to be talking about drowning in photos. So I'm going to share with you my approach to having an organized photo library. I use a couple of different systems for this. And you could take bits and pieces of this workflow or the whole workflow, whatever works best for you. But I'll share with you how I keep all my pictures organized and make them so that I can drop into multiple photo editors and still have everything be seamless. So what we're here for today is to make sure that you really understand how to search and find your photos. So we're gonna talk about how to make sure that those images don't get lost. That includes backup strategies, talk about ways to access your photo library remotely, and I'll show you how to put all these pieces together. What you're gonna learn is how to set up a hard drive so multiple applications can access it. So this isn't just about Lightroom or Capture One or On One, but rather creating a workflow so that any photo software can access those images. I use a ton of different photography software and I want everything to be seamless. I'll also show you how I clone hard drives every night for emergency recovery. This way I've got my system backed up as well as my photo hard drives. And we'll talk about strategies to avoid data loss. I will share some strategies on how I use the cloud and ways to put everything into the database in the cloud so that you don't have to worry about losing things. But I'll share with you how I do it at a budget rate. And we'll talk about using metadata to organize images, how Aftershoot can be used to rate your images using artificial intelligence, and how I use Milio to keep all my devices in sync. So a lot of cool stuff. Great. Well, great to see everyone here. We've got people from all over the place, New York, Australia. It's wonderful. Glad we have such a great audience here tonight. My name is Rich Harrington. I'm a visual storyteller, and I take a look at where photography and video overlap. I've also done a lot of work through the years with AI, having helped work on tools like Perfectly Clear, Aurora HDR, Luminar, Luminar AI, and Luminar Neo. And uh, now I'm working on some new stuff, which will be out later this summer. Uh, so when I figure something out, I tend to write it down. So I've published about 40 books and more than 200 full-length courses. And I have been the publisher of Photo Focus now for about 13 years. And uh, like I said, if I figure something out, I like to share it to help other people be more creative and enjoy their creativity. So we'll explore a lot of different techniques today, but you're welcome to check out any of my other training or books if it helps you out. Okay. Now, I am a little bit different than the average creative. Uh, I forced myself to get a degree in project management, and I'm actually a certified project management professional by the Project Management Institute. This means that I take a very methodical approach, and I've actually done a lot of consulting to television stations and a lot of uh, large networks to help them with their metadata and organizational approaches to keeping organized photo and video libraries. So. Let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, we've worked on a variety of projects at my company, mostly high tech companies, nonprofits, and some government agencies. And like I said, I've worked with a lot of different television stations on their networks and have worked on several different technology companies, making their software better. Okay, let's jump in. So first up, one of the things I'd like to point out is that photos are growing very, very quickly. If you look at where we were last year and where we're going to be in 2026, the number of photos being stored has effectively doubled. That's pretty insane that about every five years now, the number of photographs being stored on hard drives is doubling. This means that you're going to have more data to keep track. Now, it doesn't mean that your photos are doubling, although they might. But it means though, is that more and more people are getting into photography and they're taking more and more photos. So it's important that you have a strategy to handle a growing library. So what I'm gonna share with you is my workflow. And I like to point out, you have to ask yourself how much is too much. I have an exceptionally organized workflow and I'm what you call creatively paranoid. I like to make sure that I never lose a picture. I've got pictures that I consider to be very valuable, a collection of my professional work as well as my personal work. So the amount of detail you put into preserving your images is ultimately up to you, but I'll give you a spectrum or a range approach. So at the top here is least protected. 
If your pictures exist on just a single hard drive, they're not safe. You are one disaster away from losing everything. And that could be a power failure, a corrupt drive, uh, a spilled can of soda. This is not backup. Some people will put their images on an extra drive, keeping two copies. That's better than one, but a hard drive sitting on a shelf, particularly one that's unpowered, basically has a 50% chance of some data loss at the end of the first year. And that increases basically doubling each year. This is why a lot of people turn to cloud backup because it's pretty simple. You set it up and it just runs. But the challenge with cloud backup is that it can get really expensive. So most cloud backup services are charging about $10 a terabyte a month. So for me, if I were to put everything into Adobe's cloud, for example, that would cost me about $120 a month or $1,400 a year. That's more than I wanna pay. So I'm gonna share with you some other strategies. I'd rather take that $1,400 and put it towards a new computer or a tablet or a lens, not just cloud storage. But that doesn't mean that I don't have all my images in the cloud. I just use a different type of cloud. And we'll talk about that in a moment. RAID, a redundant array of independent disks, is a great idea. This is where multiple hard drives are in a case. And you can have multiple drives potentially fail without losing data. You also can use multiple offsite backups or go as far as a managed backup service that does all the backups for you. You're gonna learn about all of these approaches other than the single drive one, which I'm just gonna tell you now, please don't do that. It's a really bad idea. Don't have your content on just a single hard drive. Okay, so let's talk about automation. First up, the problem with most backup services is that they're not automated. If they're not automated, you have to remember to run them, which is where human error comes in. You get busy. So I use an automated service. On my Macs, I use Carbon Copy Cloner, but any of these tools will work. Super Duper, Acronis Trimage, Backblaze, Time Machine, all of them are a type of backup. And same on the Windows side. Syncback Pro is the tool I recommend, but these others also work great. And what these allow you to do is schedule your backups. So my backups are set to run on a nightly basis. And with my laptop, whenever I plug in my backup drive, it's gonna run. I try to remember to do that when I'm traveling or when I'm gonna be away from home, but you can put it right on your calendar and have a calendar alert. And with this type of software, if your backup drive is plugged in, it runs automatically. Or if it's plugged in, it's gonna go. So let me show you what this looks like here for a second. I'm gonna open up Carbon Copy Cloner on my Mac and I'll just walk you through the basics of what it does. Let me go ahead here and I'm just gonna switch and choose this application and hopefully you can see it. So in this case, there we go. This is Carbon Copy Cloner. So what I have it set up for right now is that automatically this hard drive backs up to the clone hard drive on a daily basis. That works great. I'm gonna set up another backup right now. I'm gonna say, let's make a new task. And in this case, I'm gonna call it Drobo A clone. And what I wanna do here is say, go ahead and select my Drobo 5D A volume. That volume is where all my pictures are. Now, you don't have to use Drobo. I just happen to use this as a backup solution. They are falling a little bit out of grace these days because they've fallen behind with keeping their drives up to date. So there's lots of other tools in the market. This is just what I have. And what I wanna do is set it up so that Drobo 5DA automatically backs up to 5DB. And I'll tell that to run every single night. So we could say on a daily basis. That's cool. And I can even schedule when, for example, late at night, 11 o'clock at night. Now, what I suggest here is you have some safety so you can see here whether or not you're gonna have a safety net. The safety net will warn me if there's something that was erased on Drobo A1 and Drobo B1 will say, hey, this data used to be here. Did you really mean to erase it? And every night it's gonna back up. I'll hit save. There we go. That's the same thing that's happening here, okay? 
Now it tells me here there's a little bit of errors. So this is good to check what happened. And what I see here is the errors is that the files that are being used by Dropbox that are just pointer files, it's having an error with those, which I would expect it to do. But everything else is backing up seamlessly. So every single night or when I click start, my computer is backed up. And that's great because it means that if anything were to go wrong with this computer, I have a bootable backup externally connected. And because it only has to back up what changes, it only takes a couple of minutes to run each night. But again, it's totally automated. So I would strongly suggest you take a look at some of these types of tools. What you wanna do is pick a tool like this that can automate the backup of your computer or your data hard drives. This way it's gonna stay in sync. Now, Susan, I see you're raising your hand. If you could type that question into the Q&A pod, uh, that would make it much easier for me to answer and I'd be happy to do so. So just use the Q&A button and we can tackle them right there. Okay, that's the concept of an automated backup, automated backup, I should say. And it doesn't matter if you're using your computer, your home drive, or if you're backing up a drive filled with data. I still recommend that you have a cloned copy on a regular basis. Now, another thing you have to decide is search. How are you going to search? Are you going to just rely on AI to find things? which is fine. I'm totally cool with AI. The new Lightroom uses an AI type search. Uh, tools like Photos for Mac OS can use this. There's tools like Xire that you could tag your images using AI and then search. You can use detailed folders, keeping a folder for each client or job. You can have tags and keywords or better yet, a mixture of these things together. It's ultimately up to you how you organize these. Now, I wanna show you a couple of tools for search, and we're gonna come back to these, but having things organized is a great idea. Now, David asked, can you use Carbon Copy Cloner for a total computer and not just photos? Absolutely. I'm cloning my entire hard drive, David. That's my boot drive. But I also clone my media drives that have photos and videos on it. So they work great. And it does create a bootable backup. Now, Carbon Copy Cloner is just for Mac OS, but if we go back one slide here, let me go back, I think, <laughs> back, back, there we go. Uh, you see a couple of other tools, David, that hopefully will give you recommendations, depending upon if you're on a Mac or a PC. All of these are pretty solid and they all have temporary uh, free trial versions. So you can see if it works, what works best for you. Most of the tools are gonna be priced in the 29 to $79 range. So pretty reasonable, not a big deal for backup. Okay, all right. Next, let's show some of those search tools, okay? Now, you're asking about uh, Carbon Copy Cloner versus Mac Time Machine. Short version, Mac Time Machine doesn't create a bootable hard drive. It does versioning of your files, but it doesn't back up everything. It just backs up certain documents and it's not terribly easy to control. Now, I do run Time Machine, but I just use it more as a version backup if you want a bootable or grab and go backup, something like Carbon Copy Cloner is way better because you have an exact mirrored image of your hard drive. And it's much faster to restore from, or in a pinch, you can even boot and run right off of it. All right, let me show some of these organization tools. I'm gonna start with Xire, and then we'll take a look at Mylio. So Xire is a tool that can be used if you want to do AI type keywording. So XR Photo lets you import, it's available for Mac and Windows. And what you do is you simply import in folders of images. So when you're ready, you can just add a folder by clicking the add button, browse and do it and point it at it. What it's gonna do is analyze the images and put in keywords. So for example, you see here, I can do a search. So let's just take a look here and we'll open this up and you can see a variety of terms. For example, show me buildings and it identifies what it thinks are buildings. Now, not everything's gonna be a perfect match. Sometimes things get a little confused, but for the most part, that was pretty accurate. How about food? Well, 
got a little more confused. Notice though, that it still can be useful. Animals, well, that was pretty good. And what it's attempting to do is tag those for you. Birds, insects. Now, again, you see it can get confused, but it is generally pretty useful. And you don't rely on this for perfection, but what you can do is have it find some of the stuff. It's a supplement. What I like is not just for trying to recognize the content, but you'll see things like bright pictures, colorful photographs, high contrast versus low contrast, silhouettes, symmetry or balance. So this works pretty well and really helps you find some of that content. So as you can see there, it lets you quickly locate. And you also have the ability here, besides using keywords, to do searches based on faces. So you can tell it that you're looking for, say, faces with teenagers and start the search. And so it found faces with teenagers. I can say that I want something with just two faces, both of them being adults or elderly. Start search. And you see how it narrowed that down and was able to find them within the library. Now, these keywords are embedded in the images themselves. So if you wanna use another tool, I use Mylio, you could be using Lightroom. Lightroom can still search on those tags or keywords. And so it puts that in the metadata for the images themselves. And what you'll see here is it gives you really good control. Now, what's nice here is as you look, you can see the keywords that it assigned. Adult, elderly, eyes open, face, frontal, glasses, person, smile, two faces. Those are all keywords that were inserted into the metadata of the images to make them stand out. So that works out nicely so you can find things. Now you can go ahead and add extra information here, flagging, tagging, stars, et cetera, if you want, and that'll also hand off. The key is when you're done to make sure you choose photo store metadata. And what that does is it will write it to the file. Now that did it for just the one file, but if I go back and take a look at all of my stuff, let's clear out that search there. There we go. And instead we just look at everything within the results. There we go. Now I can choose to write all of that metadata and it's gonna be stored with all of the pictures. So a tool like Xire is just a way to quickly add extra metadata into the files themselves. Okay, now I see a couple of questions. Let me tackle these and then we'll jump forward. Uh, I see a comment here that says that you've used SuperDuper to create a bootable backup. And then when you upgraded, it lost the ability to back up a clone. So Carbon Copy Cloner does work with the newer Mac OSs, but you do have to upgrade to a newer version. That's pretty common with a lot of these tools that if you wanna make bootable backups, you'll have to sometimes keep them up to date. So that's fine. Uh, do you leave your computer running all the time? I do. Uh, I do leave this computer running all the time. It's fine. It'll go into a low power mode or sleep mode if needed, but it can wake itself up. Uh, I have no problem leaving my desktop computer plugged in. My laptop, not always. It'll go to sleep. Uh, it'll get its lid closed, but I leave my desktop computer plugged in all the time. Okay. All right. Uh, David, you're going to see why we use other tools besides Lightroom, short version. Lightroom is a tool that I like to say is a great compromise. So Lightroom is pretty good at metadata, pretty good at editing, and a pretty good raw decoder. It's kind of like the spork of uh, photography software. It's useful. It tries to do all things. My personal belief is that you're better off with a knife, a fork, and a spoon. So use the raw decoder, use the catalog and organizational tool, and use the editing tools that you prefer for the job. And I use five or six different photo editing tools for pixel editing, depending upon what I need, but rarely do I use Lightroom. I like it, but I use the same camera raw engine in Photoshop when I need those advanced editing tools. But I also use tools like Capture One, On One. I use Luminar, I use Aurora. It just depends on the job at hand and what I need to accomplish. 
So what I was showing you here was a tool called Xire and uh, E-X-C-I-R-E, -E, if that helps, okay? So perfect. And yes, uh, it is making sidecar files that can be read by other tools, okay? All right, I think we answered that question to everyone now, so I'm gonna keep going forward. And uh, you can see here that what it's able to do is recognize things like what's going on in the picture itself. All right, let me show you something else here. Now, I like to use Mylio because Mylio creates a universal photo library. So in my case, when I'm in Mylio, I have everything. Now, I've got all my images from Facebook and Flickr. I've got extra images, like my entire Apple Photos library stays in sync. So as I shoot on my iPhone, it's automatically added in. So right before this, my wife and I were at the Kennedy Center. I saw something I wanted to check out. It's imported. Earlier today, I was shooting some video and just testing out some stuff on my iPhone to check out the different types of Zoom and the switchover. And all of that's in sync. Everything stays in perfect sync. So my Facebook pictures, my Flickr pictures, my Apple or Android library, I could import Aperture libraries. I've got folders of images and everything is here. Now I'm gonna show you why I use this later because it's the beautiful fact that it syncs perfectly to my tablet and smartphone. And I can walk around with 25 years of photographs on my smartphone, which is pretty amazing in a small raw format. But here's what I'll do. Everything is searchable. So if I need to do an advanced search, I can do that. For example, I can click here and say that I wanna do a search and click to choose criteria. For example, maybe I want to find pictures of my wife. I can scroll down and because of the face detection, it's able to add that. So there's pictures that she's in, there's her. I can see that there's 766 pictures on my computer that have my wife tagged in them. Now what I could do is view that on a map and I can see trips that we've taken together. So maybe I wanna take a look at that time that we went down here and we were in Mexico. I could see that. With one click, I can say, show that to me on a calendar. And now I see all the pictures or show me that in the folder where it exists. And it will take me right to that particular folder where the images are stored. So everything is all connected, which is really cool. Mylio syncs everything from every source into one photo library that every other tool can see. So it just creates this really nice workflow. Now, this is what I like to use to browse. I'll show you more about it later, but I find it to be really quite useful that I can have everything in one universal library. And then with a single click, I can hand off to any photo editor that I need to. You see here, I could just pass that on and edit it where I want. So if I wanna open up in Luminar Neo or say Aurora HDR, with one click, it's gonna hand that off and edit it. That's how easy it is. So this works really quite nice. Let me go ahead here and I'm just gonna share my screen one more time. Make sure you're seeing this all. So here's my layout. And what I've got going here, hopefully you are all seeing it. Looks like you are. I have a universal photo library and this is across all my devices. So I've got my Flickr photos. I've got all my Facebook photos. I've got my Apple camera roll. Here's those pictures I took just earlier today, automatically imported and synchronized. Everything in one place, aperture photos, my main photo library, scans, stock photos, my time-lapse library, and an inbox on my iPad. Anytime anything is shared with me that I wanna store, it just comes right in. So really pretty simple. And everything is searchable. So when you click to do a search, you can search by person, by location, by ratings, tags, keywords, saved searches that you wanna come back to or even recent searches. And so everything becomes visible. So for example, 
I can say that I want to do a search and look for pictures of my wife. She and I just had a nice dinner out and we took, went to the opera this afternoon. And if I want to find pictures, there we go. Now I can view those pictures on a map. And I see, oh, here's that trip to Germany we took. Well, I could see more. I could say, show me that entire folder. And now I'm going to see all the pictures from that trip. And I'm able to dig in and take a look. So this makes it really simple to connect things. But you don't have to make major changes to your workflow because with just a click, everything hands off. So if you want to edit in another tool, all you have to do is choose photo open with, and I can go to Photoshop. I can go to Lightroom. I can go to Capture One. I can go anywhere. And you see it's going to do that smooth handoff and then open up the file. So nice and simple. All right, let's come back to our slides and uh, we'll take a look at a little bit more. But I like to make a combination of these techniques. AI search is helpful, but it's gonna keep getting better. I like to keep things in detailed folders so I can find things. So for example, you will see in my folder tree that I keep all of my primary photos pretty organized. So if I were to go say to cruises that we've taken, I can find all of those in one folder. And so with a single click, I'm seeing all the stuff we've taken like that. And then I can see the different years within. Click and I'm inside. Click and we can keep going. So this makes it very simple to find the different content within. And you can even go over some content and flick right through it if you want to get a good idea of what type of pictures you have in there. And so you can actually see the contents within a folder, which is pretty cool. All right. I think you guys are seeing it right now. It is sharing. You're not seeing Milo images. It's working now, right? Yes. Okay. So if you already have a catalog of 500,000 images, that's fine. You can use tools like Xire and Aftershoot to scan those images. Um, but chances are, Jim, those images are still on your computer. So what Milio does is it can read those same folders and then synchronize them to your desktop, your laptop, your phone, and your computer. And it hands off back and forth to Lightroom all day long. So Milio comes with a Lightroom plugin. So your changes will show up just fine. So those will stay in sync. So if you do prefer to use Lightroom, that is certainly your prerogative. Uh, it does have the ability to keep those in sync and that works very nicely, okay? All right, let's keep going forward. And I wanna show you some more stuff. Okay, now, one of the things that's really important is that you keep things backed up, okay? So the standard approach is considered a three, two, one backup. This means three copies of your data on two different types of media, so not all the same hard drive, with one of those stored offsite. Now, what's important is that you clearly distinguish between the primary copy, the one that you're working with, and the backup copy. Because what you don't want to do is mix those two together. You don't want some of your edits stored on your backup drive and some stored on your primary drive because then when you create your backup, you're gonna lose edits. So it's really important that you keep those in sync. So you might've recalled that I had an A drive and a B drive. That's how I understand my primary drive and my backup drive. I suggest you schedule those backups to run on a regular basis. Okay, so here's what that looks like. This is a screenshot of my cleaned up desktop, okay? So there's a couple things at play here. First up, I'm absolutely using Time Machine. That's fine if you're on a Mac and you can use some of the built-in tools on your Windows computer to keep a, a bootable backup, not a bad idea. I'm using a declutter tool 
so that stuff on my desktop gets cleaned up. So pictures that I haven't filed go into the pictures folder, loose documents into documents, music and videos. And then I have a folder for artwork. I use a tool called Declutter Pro on my Mac, which moves those into subfolders. Now on the right here, I've got my primary computer and a backup drive. This is a RAID, a redundant array of disks. It creates some safety. And these are my primary photo drives, A1, and this is my video drive, A2. Every night, those back up to B1 and B2. And if there's any changes, those are captured. This works really nicely because it cuts down on mistakes. Now, in my case, Ian, I've added all my folders to Mylio. So you can add as many folders as you want and you just link to the existing folders. So I'll show you what that looks like. So you could just click the plus button and say, add media accessible from this device. Go to any folder and pick it. And then it's in your Mylio library. Then later, if you take a look at your dashboard, you could see how everything stays in sync. So I've got my main Mac, my MacBook Pro, a PC, another PC, a Mac mini at the office, another PC, my iPad and my iPhone. Right now, my iPhone is currently asleep. If I turn it on and launch the Mylio app, what it's gonna do is automatically connect. So let's just launch that there. There we go. It's now running. And in just a second here, it connects. And you can see now that my iPhone needs to download 148 files that my other devices had. So it will start to connect. I could see the progress here and it'll start to download those. And so it really is that simple. It creates a secure private device to device network and it will automatically detect changes. I'm also using a full backup drive and I've got a cloud backup going to Amazon and another one to Microsoft OneDrive. So this is keeping everything in total sync. And so it doesn't matter. If I import something new on my laptop, it gets backed up to my home computer. If I'm at work and I import some pictures, it gets backed up to all my computers. If I'm on my phone, I take a picture, it gets synced to my phone. So that's what Mylio does. It's a secure network that connects all of your devices into one overall network. Now, when you first turn a device on, it's got to do a little bit of scanning because my phone also has 629 images to upload because I was out taking pictures the other day. So once they all see each other over the network here, they'll start transferring files and backing everything up. All right. So that's just one way of doing it, but I like it. So let's see here. I answered that question. Am I working on full-size photos on your hard drive and then backing up to Mylio? So a couple things there. Mylio is not duplicating my footage. So all Mylio is doing initially is reading the material. When I am on my devices that are labeled vaults, those are full backup copies. Here's something most people don't realize you can go and order really cheap backup drives to back up a large library. Go ahead in the chat pod and tell me what you think a 14 terabyte hard drive would cost. I'd be curious what you guys think because it's changed a lot. And don't cheat and just use Amazon or Google search. Just tell me your best guess of what you think a 14 terabyte hard drive costs these days. Let's see. Okay. All right, we're all over the place with guesses. Yeah. So those of you who guessed about $1,400 or about $300 are pretty close. So there's different prices, 14 terabytes, not going to be 60 bucks, <laughs> maybe in the future, but uh, it's going to depend. I see an 18 terabyte one here for 455. Here's a eight terabyte one for 200, right? They're all over the place. So I use these Seagate expansion drives. And uh, the 14 terabyte model is currently $243. It doesn't take, I mean, it's gonna depend on how many pictures you have, 
but my whole photo library is not over 14 terabytes. That's 25 years of pictures. Now, if you're a professional photographer and you're shooting all the time, you'll have more than that. But my photo library is about 11 terabytes. That's not a lot of storage to have a complete backup. That's what a vault is. It's a complete backup of all your data and it just backs everything up. So no matter where I take the picture, it downloads a copy to my backup drive. All right, so that's part of that strategy of three, two, one backup then, having multiple copies. So three copies of any important file, a primary and two backups on two different media types, such as hard drive and optical or hard drive and SSD or hard drive and cloud. And one should be offsite. Now, if you don't wanna use cloud and you have the ability to run something on two different computers, Milo could be installed on your work computer and back up automatically offsite. I do use cloud. If you're in the United States or many other countries, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you get unlimited raw and JPEG storage included with your Prime membership. So I'm backing everything up to Amazon Cloud. What you wanna think about here is three copies, one that you work from and two that you have just in case something goes wrong. You wanna use two types of media. So maybe an SSD and a regular hard drive or bare minimum, two different physical drives. Don't put them on the same hard drive. It's not a backup if the same hard drive fails. And then one being stored offsite, okay? So the offsite one lets you go offsite to a different location, okay? Now, here's what I do. I see somebody asking about Backblaze, great question. So Milio doesn't currently work with Backblaze, but it also is compatible with Backblaze. It just doesn't have built in. Backblaze is a utility that you can install on your computer. So I have Backblaze installed. Here it is, Backblaze Backup. And uh, let me just minimize this here and I'll show you. So Backblaze is automatically backing up my computers. I want you to look at this, 100 and 12 terabytes of data are being backed up to my Backblaze account. That's every hard drive I have connected to my computer here. All of them, they're all backed up to Backblaze. So Backblaze is a service that's a fixed price per month. Now, when I sent up that 112 terabytes of data, it took three months to back everything up. It is not a fast service, but Backblaze is very cheap. And so if you choose their personal backup service, it's gonna cost you approximately $7 a month for unlimited storage or $70 a year. That's really cheap. That's per device. So I put Backblaze on my desktop computer and on my laptop computer, and I have it back up everything. Now, Backblaze will also ship you a hard drive if you need to do recovery, and then they'll just charge you for the hard drive, normal price, or you could actually ship it back and they'll refund you. This gives you that ability if you don't wanna do the slower downloads, but you just install Backblaze and it backs up everything. That works totally fine because, for example, with Milio here or Lightroom here or Capture One, Backblaze is independent of that. It just runs and it works on Mac or PC. And it is a great way to have some extra level of safety on your backups. Okay. So hopefully we covered that question. I think I see Fran was asking about that. Let me take a look at a couple of the other questions here that have popped up. So if you have a RAID, are you using two 14 terabyte drives? Nope. So this is my main RAID. And it is actually about 70 terabytes of data, but that's because I do video work. If you're a photographer, you don't need a 70 terabyte RAID. I do a lot of video work, so I do. But you can get a nice cheap drive at 14 terabytes and then have a second one and just have it mirrored. And that works just fine. And that will let you keep those together. Milio Philip is $100 a year. Okay. Backblaze is $70 a year. So hopefully that gives you what you needed there. Okay, so let's talk about that first import. So when you import, 
I do not suggest using the import tool in your photo software. In fact, I think it's pretty much a pretty much bad idea to import directly off the memory card. That's because these tools don't do verification. So what I like to suggest is that you use your operating system to copy the data. Ideally, you copy it to a drive that has some protection. Also, you should transfer it to two hard drives. Now, here's a mistake a lot of people make. They copy it to one hard drive, and then they make a clone or a backup of that one copy. If anything went wrong with that first transfer, the backup is bad. I suggest when you transfer photos, you copy them directly to two separate hard drives. That way, if you get any mistakes or problems, you can catch it. This is how the data gets validated and keeps it safe, okay? All right. So David is asking about RAID or the redundant array of disks. This depends on what you want to do, but what RAID allows for is some level of protection so that your hard drives are prevented against failure. So for example, here's my main RAID. 98 terabytes, okay? It's set up with a RAID 5, which means that two of the hard drives can fail and I wouldn't lose data. My Drobos are set up the same way with its own RAID technology. There are five hard drives in that Drobo and two of them could fail and I wouldn't lose any data. That's the whole concept of a RAID. Hard drives are like tires on a car. They work, until they blow out. And then when they blow out, it's catastrophic. This is why professional truck drivers have more than one tire on each axle. So if a tire blows out, the truck doesn't crash. This makes it much safer to deal with issues. So there's different solutions out there, but you wanna have some sort of redundancy if you're really serious about storage so that your hard drives are protected. That's the idea of RAID. Okay, if you wanna know more about 321 Backup, because I got kind of nerdy there, you can head on over to Photo Focus and do a search for 321 Backup. I also recently did a webinar with Milio all about 321 Backup, and it's about an hour long, and it talks about everything related to the concept of 321 Backup. dpbestflow.org is also a great website that you can go. I'm a co-author of the site, and it has a whole bunch of information about backing up data. Now, some of you are going, that sounds really paranoid. Rated hard drives, all these extra steps. Yes, but I've never lost a picture in 25 years. I have photos of my kids. I've got photos for clients. They're valuable to me. I don't want to lose those pictures. My house, knock on wood, could burn to the ground and every photo could be recovered. Someone could break in and steal my devices and it doesn't matter. I could lose my phone or my laptop and every picture on it was backed up the last time my device was on the internet. That's how Milio works. It's backing up that content. Backblaze backs up my content. These are all safety mechanisms. And you're like, do you have two backup softwares running? Yeah, I got three running. Because I believe that if I was going to jump out of an airplane, I'd be the guy that had three parachutes with them. I'm kind of paranoid when it comes to data backup, but you could choose what works for you. But I like to have multiple points of failure because that means a greater likelihood of success. Plus all these tools I'm showing you are automated. You install Backblaze, it just runs. You install Milio, it just runs. You install Carbon Copy Cloner, Super Duper, any of those other ones, they just run. Once you've put them in place, they keep running automatically all the time, backing up your stuff, okay? All right, I think we tackled those questions there. Let me just take a quick look at the Q&A, see if there's anything that I need to answer before we go forward. And thank you guys for answering questions. How do I connect so many hard drives at the same time? Uh, I just plug them in. <laughs> so I have hub, uh, I've got them running into a USB powered hub and it works fine. Uh, you can get hubs. I've got Thunderbolt hubs. 
Um, this lets you plug multiple things in and it expands your ports. They're not expensive. So uh, there's a lot of tools out there that make it easy to have lots of hard drives plugged in. So not a big deal, okay? All right, let's see here. When you use Time Machine, is that a hard drive or an SSD on your Mac? It is just a regular cheap hard drive because it doesn't need to be fast. I am using an SSD for the nightly backup because I want that to be completely bootable. And if I had to run my computer off of it or grab it and go, it's super fast. And a two terabyte SSD is not very expensive these days, a couple hundred bucks, okay? All right, let's keep going forward. So that's that Milio webinar. You can look it up on YouTube. Just look up 321 Backup, uh, type in Milio Harrington, you'll find it and you can do more about that. All right, let's keep going forward. I wanna show you now some of these tools. So let's explore and put these tools into action. All right, first up, let's go to Aftershoot for a while. Aftershoot's a really cool tool that will pick your best pictures. Now, that may sound weird, but what it does is it does culling. So it can select the best photos from each set. So let me show you how it works. You click new album and you add a folder of images, okay? So all you gotta do is locate the pictures you wanna load. There we go. And uh, let's do my daughter's Eagle Scout ceremony. I'll click import. And what it does here is it starts to analyze the pictures. So it loads them all in. And then what you can do is set the rules. So you click the start button and it asks you for the rules. Culling of blurred photos. Strict is gonna not allow any blurring. Moderate will accept shallow depth of field. You can choose to group the duplicates. Less grouping, more grouping. This is going to take pictures that are somewhat similar and put them together, or they have to be more similar. Then how many pictures do you want? Top 30%, 20%, 10%, and do you want any highlights? Additionally, under the advanced menu, it can look for closed eyes, blurs, and true duplicates. And you click start culling. What it now does is it analyzes the pictures. Now, after shoot works really easy, and I'll bring up some information while that's running. Just give me one second. And Aftershoot's one of our sponsors of this webinar, but I use this tool all of the time now. I love how easy it is to be able to find my best pictures. And so what Aftershoot is doing is it identifies within the images, the best one of each set. So you don't have to worry about it throwing away bad pictures, but what it's able to do is identify the best of each of those groups, okay? So here's how it works. Let's open this up, there we go. So you're seeing here, it's selected 44 pictures from the 152. If I open this up, there were five pictures similar. And so what it did is it looked at them and said, oh, eyes were closed, eyes were closed, eyes were closed. And I identified that one was pretty good, but it thought this one was the best composition and look. And so as I go to each one in a set, if there's only one of that picture, it'll keep the best one. But if there's five, it's identifying within each set the best of each. So for example, as we get here a little bit later, you can see how it's picking. So it looked through and found the best facial features, the best eye contact, the best emotion, and it's able to identify those, but it never throws any picture away. Let's do another album. Import, add folder. And this time I'm gonna bring in this one. Uh, this is about 400 pictures from a trip to Alaska. And I'll tell it to start culling. And I'm gonna say, you know what? Go ahead and get rid of the blurred photos and group those together and choose fewer per set and go. 
It will analyze all the images and then start to narrow them down. And after you've done this, if you need to, you could run it again with different rules. Now, if you've tried Aftershoot before, I think you're noticing they've really sped it up. In fact, you could tell it to use as many processors as possible for maximum speed. What Aftershoot does is when it's all done, it will also write sidecar files. So you can save the metadata right next to it. It can also hand off to Lightroom or Capture One with just a click so that all of that information comes in. Tools like Xire, Mylio, and Aftershoot all use XMP sidecar files, which is the exact same XMP sidecar files that Lightroom, Capture One, and On One uses. So if you add stars or labels or ratings or keywords or tags or anything in any of these tools, every tool sees it. A lot of people don't realize, they think that they're trapped in Lightroom because they've done that organization, but that organization travels to other tools or other tools can add to that organization. So remember, all of these things just use XMP standard information, which makes it a piece of cake. Okay, so here it's almost done. We'll just let that finish off. And you see that it identified that, hey, not a surprise, especially when I told her to be strict about blurring, that there was a lot of blurred photos. I was shooting eagles. They fly at 45 miles an hour, guys. So here it identified the sharpest pictures. And if you again, open it up, you'll see how it found the best of each. So this lets you go through and quickly identify the best pictures within each set and the sharpest photos. And so that can narrow it down. And if you feel like it's being too strict, just restart the culling. There we go. And I could say, you know what? Go ahead and don't group as many and accept a little bit of blur. Go. And it reruns very quickly and generates the new cull like that. So if you don't like the way that it sorted the pictures, you can quickly sort again and still get this down so you don't have as many pictures to look through. So I was able to cut from 400 photos to about 130 and find the best of each image. And again, when you're done, it can save the changes or you can actually click export and hand off to Lightroom or to organize folders. So it's that simple, okay? I hope that that makes sense to everyone. Let's take a look here. Do I use Photo Mechanic? I don't, totally fine tool, Philip. Uh, it's another tool out there. So lots of different ones on the market. Um, Photo Mechanic doesn't have any AI tools that I'm familiar with, but it is similar to Aftershoot where it's designed to help you go through and cull. Uh, it is great for adding metadata and information for sure. Okay. And so that's all that's happening here, guys, is that it's just using AI. So I told you I'd tell you a little bit more about Aftershoot. Let me just open this up and share it real quick. So Aftershoot has both a paid version and a free version. Uh, if you want to use the free version, the free version of Aftershoot includes the ability to detect closed eyes and some of the other uh, issues with pictures. Let me just bring that up here really quick. Free version will detect closed eyes and blurred photos. And the AI version is able to apply star ratings as well as do the flags of which images it thinks will do best on social media. And it can quickly find faces so you can go through. And that a benefit of the face culling is it just makes it really easy to review pictures. So here, like with a family portrait session, as I go between photos, I can very quickly see all the pictures within and you see all the faces automatically called out so you can check them without having to zoom into each one individually if you were doing portraits like that. And if you wanna add one to the selection, like if you really liked a different look like this for silliness, I just press A for add and it will add it as an additional five star. So you can always manually still do selects. And then again, when you're all done, just save the changes and the sidecar files are written and other tools will see them.
Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Robin lost travel images, multiple places, two hard drives. They're all empty. I'm not sure, Robin. Sorry about that. Uh, Milio does make sidecar files. So it does put that. And so it does use XMP sidecar files. All right. So we talked about Aftershoot. We talked about Xsire. Xsire is designed to automatically add information to a picture. So for example, if we take a look here, you'll see that it was able to identify that there was an adult, that there was eyeglasses, that there was a group shot, right? So it's able to find that information. So what it's looking for is it's trying to add useful information to an image. It can identify color palettes. So you can actually search for images that are similar to this. So I say, you know what, go ahead and look my whole database, start search. It found other images that had similar color palettes. That's what these first ones are. And then other things that had some similarities. You see, it starts to deviate, right? If we say, you know what, let's find her. And I want to find pictures with her in it. We can actually search and look for this particular face. And so you can invoke a search and have it find a particular individual. So this will allow you to actually look and find somebody very particular throughout other photos. So it's pretty cool. And uh, just something that you can try. That's Xire, E-X-C-I-R-E, -E, Xire Photo. Okay, let's quit that now. And there we go. We already talked about Aftershoot. I'm gonna quit that now. And now I wanna show you just a little bit more about Mylio. So Mylio is gonna let you connect all of those devices. Right now, you see mine's doing a sync. So it's currently scanning my entire photo library here because it detected that there was some changes in that folder. I added some pictures. It's gonna detect those changes and then it will move them out to all my other devices. I can see everything in that single unified photo library. So it also will synchronize your calendar. So this means that if you wanna look at your calendar and see where were you, you can actually see events from a particular time period. So if I click on July, for example, I could see, oh yeah, I had that project, that video, that photo and video shoot for Major League Baseball. Let me see all the pictures from that shoot. I click on it and right there from going from my Google Calendar, I see the Major League Baseball All-Star game that I photographed. I was doing a time-lapse shoot for Fox Sports. So I was able to look right at my calendar and look up a job right on the calendar. I could say, you know what, let's go here. And uh, it was August here of 2021. Where was I? Oh, well, let me see that trip to WPPI. See the photos from that event. With a click, it's gonna take me and I'll see the pictures that I shot at WPPI, right? Pictures I took while I was there. I can see my calendar overlaid on top of everything that we're up to. So it makes it really easy to find that content, locate your stuff and search by calendar. You can also search by map. So this shows you everything that's geotagged. And so one of the things I like to do is a little trick like this. I might have some pictures that were not geotagged. For example, let's go here into the islands. And I'm going to go to a trip to the Bahamas, Freeport, right? So what I can do is say, you know what? Actually, we'll just do Miami here. I can go ahead and say, show me pictures on the calendar that I took that day. And it will take me to the calendar and I could see all the pictures. If I realize that there's pictures that I wanted to tag that I didn't, I can drag and drop them. So for example, if I had some pictures that I didn't geotag, I can just look those up. 
like this. Let's open this up. And what I can do is go to the map and find them. So I could say, you know what, that's easy. Let me go ahead and modify those. And these pictures were here in West Virginia, but if they were tagged incorrectly or I wanted to move them, all I'd have to do is drag and drop them onto the map and it would let me move them and I can tag them. So if you end up with any pictures that are not geotagged, it's super simple. So let me go back to my all photos view here for a second. And I'll choose some pictures where I know they're not tagged, but could be. Let's just sort by date here. There we go. And let's see. I usually geotag because <laughs> I'm pretty meticulous, but let me find some that are not geotagged. Here we go. I got some right here. So all I have to do is select those and I can add the geo data. Type in the location, drag and drop them on the map and it will add. Now I got a lot spinning here right now. So it's thinking for a second, I'll let it catch up. All right, let me take a look at a couple of the questions for a second and see what we got. What is the color bars at the bottom of the calendar images? Uh, Jim, that was showing an event, an event that spanned multiple days. So if you had an event that covered multiple days, it's gonna allow you to see that over the course of several days. So that way you could see if, it, if something ran over the course of several days and you could just view your calendar that way and then sync it up. Uh, so hopefully that made sense. So let's go in here and let me share the screen again. One second. Zoom controller, where'd you go? Window, zoom, share screen. Perfect. There we go. Okay. So these are all geotagged. I have some that aren't. I have to. Let me find some. <laughs> here we go. Perfect. Got a couple that aren't geotagged. So here, I see that image geotagged. There it is. I can zoom in to double check it. And this is a place we like to visit in the mountains. What I can actually do is even do a search, but I see it right there. Cool. So I can do a search here for say lavender farm. And it's gonna look and try to find that. And so you can actually locate different places in different locations. Or let's go here and say Massanutten Resort. There we go. And it finds it. There it is. So now you've got a cool GPS map. So if I know that we were at a place and I didn't tag that, I could just grab these like this, drop them on the map like so and add it, and now they're geotagged. So it's that simple to geotag your photos. If you see that you've got a picture that's not geotagged, like this one here, this one does have it, I could just go and grab that, cool, and drop this video in the same place, and now geotag it. And now it's got geographic information so I could find it again. That'll help you locate pictures on a map. So Mylio will also do people detection. And so it's always scanning your library and it will do offline people detection. So here it thinks all of these are pictures of my mom. I'll scroll through really quick and say, those are all pictures of my mom. And I'll click approve. And here it thinks these are all pictures of my wife. This one's not, it's a little confused. So I'll properly tag it but all the rest of these are, and I can confirm. And so this makes it easy for you to go through and tag everyone that's in your pictures. You could of course make albums and folders, but it's all there. And within Mylio, everything is searchable 
and it doesn't matter where it's stored. So this was me doing it here on my computer, but what I really like is this workflow because it's not that hard to have 25 years of pictures on your computer, but how about 25 years of pictures on your smartphone? So here I am on my phone. I can see all of those 25 years of pictures. There they are. There's some old photos that are scans. Some of my first pictures from 2010, different trips. They're all there. If I see a picture that I like, where was I? Tap on it, show in folder. And now I could see everything else from that trip. You can easily view, pinch, navigate, move around. Everything is all organized in one place. There it all is. See? Nice and simple. Everything is there. Scanned photos. So I have everything right on my phone. And what's really cool is it's using just a little bit of space. So when you see a picture that you want to work with, all you have to do is choose it and you can download files on demand. So if you want the smart previews, choose them. And now you've got small raw files that take up 5% the storage space of your original. If you want to have an original raw file, just tap the button and you can download at a folder at a time or the individual image. So this will connect everything back to your main computer, which is really pretty cool. Again, everything is all in one place, so you have it there. Cool. All right, let me tackle some of the questions and then we'll be uh, taking us to the end tonight. So I see we got some questions here. Do you need a computer to run all these things you've shown us? So Aftershoot is for a computer, Xire is for a computer, Mylio works on mobile, just fine. Okay. Is Mylio storing the pictures on all devices or just pointing to a central location? So it's storing a thumbnail on all devices. You can decide to store whatever you want with super specific rules. So you can go device by device. And I could say, for example, on my laptop, I only want thumbnails or auto-optimized. On my iPad, I keep a copy of every single thumbnail. So you see, I have all my smart previews as well. That means that I can edit with raw data on my iPad. So the raw files are 5% the size of the original. They're all there. And I have every single raw file on my tablet. And I could open it up and edit right on my device. Or with the tap of a button, hand off to any other editing tool or social network. So I'm literally rocking around with all my pictures on my smartphone and tablet, but not taking up the space. So if you put my 10 terabyte library in small raw, it's about 500 gigs. If all you want is thumbnails, it's about 10 gigs. So I can fit that giant 10 terabyte library in 10 gigabytes. And then with the tap of a button, download the ones that I want whenever I need it. That's how that works but you can go through and set exactly what gets synced to each device. And on any device, you could even choose by the folder level or say automatically sync my four stars or my five stars or pictures with this color label or this keyword. So it's super precise what you can do, okay? All right, let's tackle a couple more questions. Let's see, my photos are disorganized, stored on different drives in various places. Yep, can Milio run and search all of them in one library? Exactly, Star. That's what I was doing. All you do is add all the things, and it doesn't matter where they are. Mylio sees them and makes it searchable in one photo library. And then as a consolidation step, you can add a vault hard drive, and it will create a backup copy to the vault. That way, if one of those hard drives gets lost or unplugged or fails, you have a backup copy. That's one of the whole things of Mylio is just let it import everything and merge them all together into one photo library. Aftershoot is only subscription, so is Mylio. Xire is a one-time purchase. Um, everything with Mylio S uh, Harms runs locally. 
So all the face detection runs locally and there is no cloud backup. So they actually have some of the best security out there and you're in total control. Everything just syncs there. Uh, yes, Mylio also has dupe detection. So when you import your items, it will check for duplicates. And after the fact, you could find duplicates and it will scan your library. And if it finds duplicates, you can actually tell it, say which ones you want to keep, like ones that have metadata or anything else. And then you can delete or move them out of your library, but it absolutely can delete and clean up duplicate files. So that way, when you consolidate from all those different hard drives into one library, it will remove duplicates from your library so that you have a nice clean library file, which is pretty important. That way you don't end up with extra copies or bad copies, okay? Uh, so we covered Aftershoot being a subscription. The session is recorded, so uh, we'll post a replay to PhotoFocus later. Uh, back to the RAID recommendations. So it doesn't really matter for what you want, Murali, for storage. Uh, it just depends on how big your photo library is. For my photo libraries, I use 14 terabyte hard drives and I've got them just mirrored. That works fine. Um, so, but it really just depends on the size of your library. 14 terabytes holds 25 years of pictures for me, uh, but it just depends. You'll get an idea about the size of your library by just looking at it and you can always add more storage. So it's not a big deal, okay? Um, network appliances versus wired backups. So David, there are things like NASs out there. They're growing in popularity. Um, that works fine. Mylio, I don't need one because all my devices just connect. So I just leave drives plugged into my computer. It's cheaper than buying NAS drives, but a lot of people like NASs and that's fine. Mylio works with NASs as well. So that's totally fine. If you wanna use a network attached storage drive, uh, that's up to you, okay? Uh, Mylio is a backup solution and an organizer. So Tom, it leaves things in their current place, but if you decide to move things around or clean them up, it absolutely does that. So as I'm, for example, processing new photo shoots, I've got them in a folder called photos to migrate. And so if I'm looking at a particular photo shoot and I say, you know what, this one's bad and I delete it, it's deleted on the actual hard drive. I actually cleaned it up and moved it. So if I decide to keep certain files or delete certain files or move them, it's actually deleted or moved. If you decide that you want to actually move them to a different folder, you can select a range of pictures and say move. It is actually moving on your hard drive. So it is a real cleanup tool as opposed to a virtual library tool. And any cleanup you do is actually organizing the hard drives. And then that's replicated on all systems. So I could sit down with the iPad on the couch and rate pictures. I could be on the phone and working. And all of these things work when you are offline as well. So Mylio does not require a cloud connection. So if I decide, for example, to just work on my phone on the go, let me just share my phone here again. I think it's sharing. There we go. Let's go right into airplane mode, right? No internet. Everything is still there. Everything is still searchable. Let's turn off the Wi-Fi as well. Wi-Fi. So you believe me, it's totally off. There we go. Wi-Fi off. Airplane mode. Great. Everything is totally searchable. No network connection. There's everything, right? Right on my device. There we go. Pinch and zoom, browse, tag, rate, select things you want, flip on through, organize, have everything right at your fingertips. These are just thumbnails. If I wasn't in airplane mode or I needed it at any point in time, all you have to do, select an individual photo and you can download the original or the preview. And what it will do is pull it right to your device. So you get the ability there to choose just what you want on a particular device and download it. So if you have a picture that you need, simple enough, open it up. There it is. And if I choose to, I could download the original raw file right to my device on demand. 
there it is. I now have the full quality raw file on my device and I can work with it. So that's how those tools work. You get the ability to download what you need and you see it syncing right to my device right now. So it'll pull it down and you can work with them. So that's that concept of having a photo library. And I like it because I can work anywhere, guys. And then when I'm ready to, everything back home is organized. So I am not a huge fan of the cloud. I like to use it as a backup tool, but I don't like to have to pay a fortune. So I put my pictures in the Backblaze as a backup. I use Amazon Photos, which gives me free raw and JPEG backup, which Milio works with. And when I need to, I can fetch the originals from the cloud or my home computer with just the tap of a button because they all talk to each other. All right. I hope that gives you guys some ideas. We covered a lot of material today and uh, I hope it makes sense. If you remove photos on your computer, does it delete them automatically from your phone and iPad? Yes. If I delete things in Mylio, it's deleted on all my devices. If I'm working on my iPad, it's deleted. If I import on my laptop and then move them into my main hard drive, it moves them. I can literally import pictures in a hotel room and have them back up to my home computer. That's what Mylio does. It creates a device-to-device -device network. Now, I was showing you the brand new Mylio photos. This comes out on June 8th. So you were seeing a sneak preview of it. I'd suggest waiting until June 8th. Uh, that's the brand new version. So it'll be out in a couple of weeks and uh, it makes it a lot easier than the current version. So that'll be dropping on June 8th and you can check it out over at mylio.com. But if you head on over to Photo Focus, you'll find links to Xire and links to Aftershoot as well. And uh, there's a discount for Aftershoot if you wanna check that out. Okay, thank you guys so much for coming today. I know we covered a lot of questions. I hope you guys had fun and I really appreciate you coming out. I hope this gives you some ideas on how to keep your pictures organized and searchable and make sure that they're safely backed up. Thanks again for watching.